Our secrets and lies are the monsters we feed. You should know that. Every time you tell a lie, you are giving it a little piece of your soul to eat. The older the lie, the bigger the piece. Then one day, you have nothing left, and the lies eat you. So I tried filming this yesterday and I couldn't quite get the green screen lit properly and it just looked really, really bad. Uh, so today I went out and bought a bunch of stuff for lighting and I'm now recording again. Seriously, the things I do for you people. If it's not perfect, I'm sorry, but I tried. But yeah, I have just finished reading The Monsters We Feed by Thomas Howard Riley, which is a prequel novella to We Break Immortals. Uh, which made it to my number one spot in the rankings for my favorite books of 2022. We Break Immortals was an incredibly special reading experience for me, and I highly recommend everyone go check it out. I have a review for it if you'd like to know more. I'll link it up in the annotations up there. Uh, and don't worry, I won't be spoiling anything for We Break Immortals in this video. And I do think that you could read this book without reading We Break Immortals, but I'll talk more about that in a little bit. So I already knew that I would read anything that Thomas put out, but with it being a prequel novel, I wasn't quite sure if I would get attached to these new characters in the same way that I fell in love with like Aaron, Kelluin, uh, Corin, not to mention the countless other fantastic characters in that book. But pretty much right from the moment I started The Monsters We Feed, I felt like I was right at home. And in our year-end wrap-up video, I mentioned how while I was reading We Break Immortals, it kind of became almost like a nightly ritual that I looked forward to every day, uh, just kind of looking forward to curling up in bed and reading a little bit at a time, and I very much had that same experience with this book. So with some of those initial thoughts out of the way, let's see what's going on in The Monsters We Feed. We have a brother and sister duo that we follow throughout the book with the POV focused on the brother, Jathan. Him and his sister, Lyra, are nobility, but they're kind of directionless. They don't really have much going for them, and they don't really get involved in any politics or anything in the city of Colchin. But one thing we do see pretty early on is Jathan interacting with the local magistrates, selling out any and all magic users that he stumbles across, not even the bad ones, just any of them. And he has a deep-seated hatred for them that we see early on in the book, but don't quite know why as far as I can remember. Him and his sister spend their nights exploring the city and drinking with friends and mostly doing stuff that young 20-somethings do. However, while going through a slummish area called Tenement Lane, they come across the aftermath of a gang bloodbath, and Jathan, being kind of a thiefy kind of guy, rifles through the pocket of someone who turns out to be a glass eye, finding a Jekker monocle. Now, if you've read We Break Immortals, you know what a glass eye is, you know what a Jekker monocle is, but basically it's how the magic detectives of this world, the glass eyes, find magical residue so they can hunt down rogue magic users. It's a crystal lens that allows them to perceive the magical world and just kind of the magical essence around them when people use magic or after they've used magic. Uh, and throughout the story, Jathan uses this monocle to hunt down the most dangerous magic user the city has ever seen, and finds himself involved in the dark underworld of Tenement Lane, while also trying to figure out just what trouble his sister Lyra has gotten herself into. And that's probably as much as I can say without spoilers, uh, but there's so many other twists and turns that the story takes, and I enjoyed every single second of it. This was an incredibly fast-paced book, and even in the slower moments, I love just hanging out with Jathan and Lyra as they hung out with their friends at the tavern and worked their day jobs. And I think that that's a sign of really fantastic character work where it doesn't really matter what the characters are doing or how the plot is progressing because you just enjoy being around them. And that's not to say that the plot doesn't progress really quickly. It does, it does move very fast and every chapter is adding another piece to the puzzle that has a fantastic payoff at the end. I mentioned in a Twitter post recently that it took me a long time to read this book 
not because it wasn't page turning and not because it was even very long, but I just did not want it to end. I noticed I was taking little bites of it at a time and fully digesting them because I just wanted to spend as much time in this world and with these characters as I possibly could and genuinely looked forward to reading it every night. And like I said, Jathan and Lyra are great. I think they have such a fantastic dynamic and learning more about their relationship and their past as the story goes on was a major highlight of the story. It's always interesting. They both love to explore and are really skilled in, uh, I guess, city traversal. So you'll see a lot of kind of rooftop running kind of scenes. And those are always really fun, just kind of seeing them run around and kind of be involved in all the chaos going on. They also have really believable faults that make them feel like real people, like obsessions and fears and heavy cases of people pleasing and lying. Uh, but they also have really great traits as well. And they feel like a brother and sister against the world who are not only siblings, but also best friends who would do anything for each other, mostly. The ending was phenomenal. I think it was one of the best endings to a book I've read all year. And it had me really close to tearing up, but mostly just filled with like hope and joy and made me so excited for the sequel to We Break Immortals. And it was just like so overall satisfying. And I walked away from that ending just feeling so good about everything I had just read. Uh, this book is also pretty standalone from We Break Immortals, but there is a thing that happens at the end that is a big reveal and ties into the main series in a big way and was just one of those rare moments in reading where it's a huge shock and you can't believe it one of those like that was that guy kind of moments and it just made me really really happy when that came up but with that being said and this is kind of what i was talking about earlier it does tie into we break immortals in some ways but if you were to read this first it wouldn't ruin anything for we break immortals i don't think uh, and I think you'll get more out of this if you were to read We Break Immortals first, but if you don't feel ready to commit to a book of We Break Immortals size, then this is the perfect book to get you hooked on that series and just kind of the world in general and writing style and whatnot. It was also really cool how in We Break Immortals you get really detailed descriptions of how the magic and the society around it works and it can take a while to kind of figure out. And in this, you get the same thing, except it's a way trimmed down version to give you the whole idea in a basic format as it pertains to the story. And I think it can actually help you understand the magic a bit more as you go into We Break Immortals, because it, like I said, in the main series, it is quite a learning curve as you figure out the basics of this magic system. Um, and this really helps kind of escort you into that if you were to start with this one and yeah i really feel like if you were to read this novella you will undoubtedly want to pick up we break immortals immediately after and i think this is a good way to kind of see what all the buzz is about and why people really like this series so far so as always we do talk about the bad as well as the good as is fair with all books uh even if we're <laughs> friends with the author uh but again just like i said in my blood for coins review there wasn't really a whole lot here to criticize as far as like the writing goes and i think that the things i do have are more features than bugs uh but i think i may have a couple things that i could see some people critiquing uh mostly the dialogue was great but somewhere in the middle of the book, there's some dialogue bouncing back and forth between Lyra and Jathan as they're arguing about stuff. And for a few of those scenes, it felt like they were kind of saying the same thing over and over and kind of talking in circles, which, you know, to be fair, is super realistic. It's happened to me many times where I'm arguing with somebody and we're just saying the same thing back and forth and we can't quite agree. Uh, but it may not have made for a super gripping scene as far as actually reading it goes. Again, I still enjoyed it because just the more time I got to spend with these characters, the better. But I could see how someone would end up skimming those portions just because it's a lot of back and forth about the same thing. The other thing is that it kind of takes a while for the snowball to get rolling as far as the actual part of the plot goes. Like, you know what the plot is pretty early on, but 
the the way that it gets to that kind of rising action that takes you to like the final climax uh it, it does it does take a while um and we see a lot of jathan kind of running around and investigating and doing the same kind of thing night after night and although this is a part of his like obsessive nature and is meant to show that he kind of keeps doing the same thing over and over even though it gets worse every single night he does it uh it can sometimes feel like we're seeing similar scenes play out multiple times um, and again, I'm not super married to that criticism because it is kind of a slow spiral into this big final conflict and each scene has something to add. But again, I could understand if you end up having that critique. But yeah, those are my thoughts on the monsters we feed. I'll hopefully be doing a spoiler discussion with Thomas on the channel soon. So please, please get yourself a copy of this book. You absolutely will not regret it. It's full of mystery and intrigue and action and wonderful characters that you won't want to let go of. Uh, and it will stick with you long after you turn the final page. I promise I have been thinking about this book so much after I, you know, kind of wrapped it up the other day. And yeah, I think that even just a couple chapters in, you'll be absolutely hooked and wanting to find out more about these characters and just enjoying your time with them. I'll have links to both of Thomas's books down in the description. I really hope you check them out. And if you'd like to chat with us, our Twitter and Discord servers are linked below as well. Don't forget, it always helps the channel a lot when you subscribe. So please do that if you enjoyed this content and would like to see more of it, especially if you'd like to see the upcoming interview with Thomas at some point. I'm not quite sure when it'll be, but it'll be soon-ish. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you when never meets forever. It's a line from the book. You'll understand when you read it. <laughs>